I want to draw your attention to a passage in Scripture that you're going to hear, and you're going to think to yourself, what in the world does this have to do with blood transfusions and the morality of blood transfusions? Uh, I'm going to read it for you right now. It's from Jeremiah 17, 20 and, uh, sorry, 21 and 22. Thus says the Lord, Take heed to yourselves, and bear no burden on the Sabbath day, nor bring it in by the gates of Jerusalem, neither carry forth the burden out of your houses on the Sabbath day, nor do any work, but hallow the Sabbath day as I commanded your fathers. Well, that has a lot to do with blood transfusion so far, Mike, you're thinking. And um, just keep listening. So, next we have John 5. This is the story of Jesus healing the, uh, the invalid man who was paralyzed for 38 years. It's on a Sabbath. Jesus asked him, do you want to get well? Uh, the invalid says, well, I have no one to help me in the pool. He doesn't really try to get I try to get in. Someone goes ahead of me. Notice he doesn't really answer Jesus' question. Um, Jesus healed him. He says, get up, pick up your mat, and walk. Once the man was cured. Now, the day which this took place was a Sabbath, so the Jewish leaders said to the man, it's a Sabbath. The law forbids you to carry your mat. Well, they were actually absolutely correct on that. Um... The Sabbath law, based on what is written in Jeremiah, and there's also something in Nehemiah, it was forbidden in God's law that you would pick up a load and carry it somewhere. And yet Jesus told him to do so. Now, at the end of that narrative, John 5.18, it says, um, this, for this reason, they tried all the more to kill him. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his very own father, making himself equal with God. Now, I know Jehovah's Witnesses are going to say, oh, that was just their perception. He certainly wasn't making himself equal with God. Well, that, that's just what John the Apostle says. Um, your argument is with him, not with me. Uh, putting that aside, it also said, John also says that Jesus was breaking the Sabbath. Jesus broke the Sabbath for the sake of healing that crippled man, and he broke the Sabbath without committing any immorality because he kept a much higher law, he kept a much higher law that is God's mercy. Now, with that in mind, Jehovah's Witnesses are going to tell you how wrong blood transfusions are because we are forbidden from, con from consuming blood. Putting it aside, as I made a point in a previous video, that no MD on earth that I'm aware of considers this a feed. It is more of a. It is considered more an organ transplant than anything. But here's where I really want to hit it home. You can say, no, no, no. Jesus wasn't breaking the Sabbath. You don't break the Sabbath by doing good on the Sabbath. Okay. You want. You want to have that point. It's yours. Um, I don't agree, but for the sake of this argument, I will agree with you. Nevertheless, Jesus told a man under those circumstances who had just been healed on the Sabbath to pick up his mat and walk. He specifically told him to carry a load on the Sabbath because of the special circumstances that it was under. He probably knew that he didn't want the man's mat to be you know, left unattended overnight and be left to the elements, so he knew that it was okay for him to carry his mat home. Under those circumstances, Jesus Christ knew that it was okay to break the Sabbath law. To break one of God's laws. Is not then it okay to break the law of not consuming blood? Not for the sake of property not being ruined, but for the sake of a human life being saved?